Hopefully they don't give us basically limit limit to time to work on it. Okay. Um, yeah, according to this, uh, what we call that references that you have there, right? Okay. Once basically you, uh, what we call that reduce a little bit on the opacity of the references. All right. Okay. Check again your brushes. Right now I'm using 200 dpi, there, okay? 200 dpi for the resolutions. And the strokes for these, uh, the size of the strokes are going to be around 15 points, there, right? Okay. So normally when you draw directly like, something directly like, from this, uh, what we call that references, you will start to draw like this one I saw directly. Like, okay? So why don't you just start with this one again? Like, okay? Line drawings like this. Move your hands and control basically the pressures at the same time when you draw this. When you draw the hairline over here, okay, try to get as soft or smooth that we can, okay? To draw the shapes of the hair same goes to the side over here and don't forget to zoom in a little bit if you want to add some details at the same time okay ears basically is a part of those uh back kind of elements there okay uh from those faces there or the cheekbone and the jawline there right so you can actually make a, a bit more loose kind of line works to show some depth of feel from the even though you might not going to be uh real life okay at this stage okay but once you actually really start to develop more kind of exercise you will start to understand right okay, why basically we have to control basically the brushes really well and of course on the eyebrows kind of structures or, or strokes there right okay what i'm going to do look at my hands when i move there right, okay i start to draw back and forth and press and control the pressures at the same times okay so that's basically also one of those techniques that uh, most of the beginners have to learn, okay, not actually draw one stroke like this, okay, when you draw this hairline. You have to move back and forth, okay? If you look into my hands, okay, how actually I move my hands from here. This is basically also really important to develop your kind of routine and your techniques while you draw and rubbing a little bit at the same times, okay, uh, to add some detail from there. And if you look closely there, okay, I will change basically my size the radius size of my strokes yet yeah, okay in order for me to add some detail you're going to add some more details i press a little bit and check back again okay uh those kind of uh volumes that i can find to add some details on those eyebrow when i draw them that's basically also the thing that you have to always bear in your mind when you draw them okay when you draw the eyes okay you cannot just actually simply draw the eyes based on this position like this you have to zoom in a little bit by most closely directly and then let's just say i'm using 15 point of sizes just now i didn't actually just draw them like that okay i try to draw one stroke at a time at the same time i try to figure it out okay, how to manage to control the volume of strokes and the quality of line that can define a bit more better kind of way to do de to develop my aesthetical kind of quality when it comes to draw these kind of areas here. See? Just like we're drawing using pencil there, right? Not everything has to be combined all the time, but when you combine those lines, make sure you have that kind of the quality of thickness and thinness of those lines as well. Okay? Practice basically this kind of routine, okay, from time to time just to develop your drawing skills. Okay? So right now you cannot see the pupil there, right? okay? What you can do is just indicate the areas that fits of this pupil. Okay, and to make sure you don't actually draw the cross eye at the same time so from here. All right, so that's basically how actually you move your hands when you actually develop those kind of strokes. The nose line over here, okay, I will always start with this kind of strokes of line. All right, okay. Right now, we're still basically in the phases of draw on the layers, right? Okay, but try to figure out how to control the pressures. Okay, from here, there has to be a little bit more thickness. This one a bit more loose, a little bit there, okay, to show those. Uh, depths and also the proportions okay according to the distance of those lines okay right here is very crucial part okay? a lot of people sometimes draw like this okay make sure you try to find where basically the strongest kind of what we call that areas there for me at this stage okay this stage where okay even though the lighting from came from this side over here the right side top but i find out okay the more balanced way to works is to draw a suggestion strokes like this okay for the nose line okay enough there okay to works on that and then i start to draw back again those 
eyes strokes over here even though this one I get a bit more lighter there okay so try to uh, refine them back again there okay that's basically our job okay as a uh, designers or illustrators there okay to see whether the the whole kind of lines okay stroke that we actually create are going to be defined correctly and balanced them up at the same time all right try to spend more time okay work with your drawings first okay same goes to this one okay this one a little bit more thickness and lose a little bit there okay practice basically your line work first okay that's the thing there okay to define basically the strokes now basically i already draw basically those mouth line over here first same goes to this part but if you look closely okay in drawings normally we are not basically try to combine between the lower lips line okay and the upper lips line there okay if you combine them together they will look like you paste those mouth there okay or lips okay on your portraits there okay what you can do you can blend it up later on using those shadings and shadows there all right if you look the quality of line over here when i move there okay this one is a bit more thicker than this one okay that's how we define them and the other thing okay that really really crucial is normally that students always do to draw the teeth you draw the teeth like this they become cartoons okay all right so make sure that you draw those lines first that you find the shape of the teeth there right see let it loose a little bit there okay and then the gum areas there okay what do you draw you draw the suggestions line like this uh, they will show more better kind of result on your drawing strokes okay when you draw those line of those teeth there right no need to combine the whole thing but you can add some shadings later on to define them okay uh, that's basically also something that you always always have to keep in your mind when you draw those teeth so normally i will suggest a little bit more for the if you have some details go ahead for me this area is there inside those mouth there okay you can actually use some etching line like this see control there okay don't don't blend or don't press too much when you etch, draw some etching line here see rubbing a little bit okay rubbing techniques or shades techniques that okay, actually works on that okay mm -hmm. now this part you draw basically the uh, what we call that the chin all right one step at a time there guys okay and control your line at the same time there, okay don't be afraid to, to combine those lines together but make sure you have the more quality kind of strokes during the process there, okay and some people they are afraid to draw these wrinkles and some eyebrow there okay eyelash there eyelash for me for the women i will draw some suggestions line only there first okay she works on it okay now basically the hair back again for me okay drawing line has to uh, there's a few number kind of drawing stroke style that can be used one of the most popular kind of style that most people don't recognize they always start with sketching only but this one okay is a contour line drawing that means we continue this line drawings okay during the process okay let me check back again stay in call still recording there right okay now what i can do i will basically draw those hairline strokes over here okay please make sure you saw you will look back again your drawings over here how to work so how basically we can define them and from here there okay normally when they design those kind of hairlines i will start with this kind of continuous line drawings and do the uh, scribbling kind of line there okay to define the curly kind of hair okay so these areas basically are part of those uh what we call it shapes that we can actually add some shadings okay to define the shadows areas there and this one is a bit more blurry there, okay so if your the shape is quite blurry okay you just make a line a bit more loose like this and later on you actually can use a lasso tool for example to define uh, the shapes of the curly hairstyle there okay so from here you want to draw back again to make it more simply and simplified okay those kind of line or those kind of complex kind of areas there so using this contour line continuous line drawing see is basically will help you to develop those kind of visual more efficiently there okay that's what i say 
Okay, whatever that we do, we not actually just simply trace them there, okay, all the times. We actually have to improvise them, okay, from here, okay, to develop that kind of visual kind of uh, what we call that output or outcome from here, okay? So here, a part of the neck, okay, people sometimes draw neck like this one, okay, just try to make it more loose here like this. And there's a curve kind of structures from there. You actually can use that to work on that. So lastly, uh, to complete the whole kind of drawings, all right? Okay. So we have basically overall kind of looks of this particular kind of drawings deficit to guide us when we come to develop those kind of stroke there, right? So next thing is as usual, so okay, the eyes. I think the highlight came from the top, so I'm going to blend it first and try to paint a little bit there, okay, on the strokes using basically my pencil brushes there first. In some of the areas like this, okay, to make it more easy for me to control, I try to shade them up and increase the size around 25%, uh, what we call that percent of strokes, just to blend basically the eyes, okay, the iris at the same time, okay. So once you actually get it right, you can see how detailed you can be there, okay, from those kind of drawing from here. All right, next thing is how to define basically the shapes. A lot of way, one of the way that I'm going to use is the conventional way is using lassos. So using lasso tools, either you actually can use also this method that you works, okay? Um, what we call that, you can use lasso, you can use also these uh, selections kind of tools that you works there, okay? It all depends, okay? Quick selection tools like this sometimes can help, that, okay? But it's not too details there. Okay, to define basically the shapes. For example, like this one, okay, when you inverse them, okay, sorry. Okay, when you inverse them like this, there, right? The shapes, when you fill in basically, right, okay, the shape like this, it can help you guys to make selections a bit more further, there, right, okay? And of course, okay, at the same time, you want to add more details. What I can do, Using this lasso, make sure the fabric is a zero percent. Uh, what we call it for pixels, there. Okay, I'm going to click shift and make some selections like this. It's a very conventional way uh, to approach on those kind of selection areas there. Okay, so some of the negative space, I'm going to uh, what we call that loose a little bit or redefine them or deselect that this that areas there. So this is also one of the techniques or one of the way that I'm actually going to use in the futures. Okay, when I want to paint or make some selections there. Okay. To make it our life basically more easy. And of course, okay, if you go through back again, okay, most of the technique that I introduced, I didn't actually focus too much, stress too much on the perfections there. But the drawings are going to be look, it's going to perform basically those. Uh, what we call that illustrations look more presentable even though you're not actually focused too much on the detail the detailing will be performing the okay once basically we get it right from those uh what we call that when all, when all those kind of shadings there right so okay mm. so you want to record more the paint style okay. right okay good so right now okay we're going to start with grayscale okay uh, the next session we're going to use colors there right so what you can do from here i'm going to alternate backspace okay to create some uh selection area okay from here we can use also more darker kind of tone right okay oops it works on it but this white colors there let me fill up first Okay, a bit more lighter is there, right? Okay. Once I actually fill up the shapes like this, guys. Okay, so whenever that you want to paint later on, okay, you're not actually going to be worried about whether the, uh, the what we call that the areas that you're going to paint are going to be outside from those, uh, what we call that the space or not, there, right? And the other thing around that we can do also, okay, normally what I did, right, I will basically make some another selection areas like this. Very rough kind of selection areas just to want to 
separate between the hair and the faces. Okay. Because of this, because this is basically one of the illustration directly. I will basically copy and paste. Just select basically the areas of this uh, faces only. But the body is going to be defined later on. All right. Okay. So from here, I can make another selection. Control and click to the layers there, right? Control and click to the layers. Of course, okay, uh, the references back again. So I will duplicate that first. Make sure that I actually select copy. Sorry. Select all. Copy and paste. Yeah, I'm not going to use this one. Okay, this one there, okay, I'm going to use as a guide at first. Okay, as a guide for us there, okay, especially on the shading smart there, right? So what I'm going to do over here next there, okay, make the selection back again to the faces there. If you worry that you make mistakes, add another layer only for shades there, okay? Shadows kind of shades there, right? So what I can do from here? As I actually mentioned to you guys, I'm going to use soft round, hard round, or hard round pressure. But you can actually test all these four brushes, okay, to paint, to, de to define the shadows there. I'm going to start with soft brushes there first, because this is the most standard kind of brushes. Okay, and then the flows back again. Change the flows into uh, 4 to 5%, error, okay? And then, of course, you cannot just shade like this, okay, to define them. For example, you have these colors over here, and then you, uh, what we call that, lower basically the tone back again. But you cannot shade like this, the guys, okay, to define them. You have to define a bit more space. And of course, okay, normally I can actually reduce, uh, increase until more darker, right? Okay, because why we are using basically those uh, flows around 6% or 5%. So basically we have more, control on our shadings there so overall basically i'm going to define the areas of shading and you have to define the light you saw basically the hot uh, the, the highlight spot are going to be on top and the light came from the right side a bit so there's a for me okay from these directions they have multiple kind of lighting this is a studio lighting there okay one two and back light at the same times so what i can do is just our job is to define the areas there they define the shadows. Adjust the size at the same time. Okay, if you take a look right now, how actually I define the shadows here. Some of the areas I press a little bit. Some of the areas I lose a little bit there. Okay, to define the shadows there. Right? So, zoom in a little bit from here. Okay, the areas of those nodes, normally we actually have to reduce a little bit the size. And when I draw the strokes there, I can see, okay, when I actually define the strokes, I try to move according to the structure there, see? Uh, that's how basically you define the, uh, the, the, what we call that, the form, okay, of some of the structures, complex structure that, you've, that you saw from those references, all right? So the back eye there, okay, of shadows there, same thing, okay? move into the curve line like this okay to differentiate basically the formation of the shadows there okay all those kind of movements that you create from this particular kind of strokes will define your detailing there right okay of course some people basically like they 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 are not passionate enough okay to wait there okay until those uh results going to be appear on those painting there right so they will see, okay, how why basically doesn't look the same there, okay? You have to relax first. Don't be panicked there, okay, when you draw or paint there, okay? What you can do, okay, from this part, okay, I will paint according to the structures or the flows from those uh, cheek, chin there, okay, to define basically the strokes. And you blend it up there, okay, as well, while you paint. And move back again to the top right here there, okay? Uh, to develop basically those kind of uh, shadows kind of volume from here directly. Okay? They will define, okay, slowly, okay, those 
areas that you want to paint. Once basically you blend it up together there, okay? Okay, this particular kind of uh, what we call that steps, you really, really need basically your focus there, okay? That's why we're not using basically there's a uh, flow around 5% soft brushes and depending also on your uh, what we call that pressure point okay when you paint uh, they will give slowly they will perform they will form basically uh the the right kind of shapes or shades that can be enhanced more further on your painting and the drawing there okay so that's why basically we have to focus okay a lot while we paint okay normally i didn't start stop with the faces there please basically make sure you try to define also some areas of pain okay right now from other areas there okay uh, this is basically oh, this is also some other thing that people always always worry there okay to works okay if you look at this part there okay this one it can be a hard shadows there okay what we can do to define them i'm going to use hot round pressure brushes later on that to works okay soft brushes to cover the whole areas there first to make the whole form going to be look more defining there okay and of course okay the light that came from the neck is very less so what you can do to paint them up i will paint like this first see move in the u shapes there okay or v shapes there and then I will define some of those areas that really focus a lot on drop the shadow, okay? When the shadows drops, okay? On those, uh, what we call that neck there first, okay? Uh, don't worry about those skin, there are the, what we call that the clothes there, okay? You actually can make some selections and paint later on using the different layers that it works. So from here, slowly, you adjust basically your size and paint a bit more darker there, okay? make sure they have, they define a bit more darkers from here but when you want to check back again that areas that okay when you paint see i try to still going to use a v-shape or u-shapes kind of formations okay take a look at your references all the time okay don't basically just imagine that okay first okay or how are you going to paint this one okay and this area is getting a bit more darker to form basically the, um, this uh, some muscle kind of structures from there, there right? Uh, so all this kind of thing will help, okay? Some of the areas a bit more uh, out from those strokes, don't worry, you can erase the little one, okay, from there. So if you look back again, how actually define this part there, right? You show basically those uh, nerve, I think the nerve there, okay? On those neck there, right? Okay? Uh, that's basically also things that you have to take care of okay, during the process okay this part the middle there right, is a bit more darker so what you can do press a little bit but using five percent of pressures they will give more better kind of control it's all about how to control there guys okay now basically the lips okay these areas a bit more darker there right uh, so you just paint them up first uh, this one you can blend a little bit there make sure when you paint the lips okay the tone even though in gray scale are going to be more different than the skin tone okay unless there's a hard shadow from here lah. okay so next okay this part all right okay? just press a little bit there if you're not so basically right, okay those kind of what we call that uh the tone you just can increase basically the the flows lah. okay uh, that's how basically you control basically the pressures from here okay now the eyes itself okay a bit more darker from here there okay generally okay just paint them up don't worry sir, okay sometimes people doesn't afraid to paint or to add some shadows right here okay when you actually look at the references there, okay why because they thought basically their eyes are going to be look like a panda there, right okay but it's not okay you define first properly and of course you're having the layers over here but well, you have to be afraid there, right? See the layers over there, there right? Uh, so these layers basically will give more kind of
uh, separations, okay? You're afraid to make mistakes? The layers will help you, okay, to define them. So try to organize them. I will try to use at least four to five layers only to manage basically my working files, not more than that. Okay, thank you. And send it over to me later on. You saw, uh, you can actually capture basically the hands, right? Thank you. Eh? Uh -huh. Which one? The files. Yes, I want it. Uh, you can send over to what? How big is it? If big enough, you can send over through my email. Okay? If you can send to WhatsApp, better lah. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Huh? Appreciate it, right? Appreciate it. Okay, guys. So, guys, shadings basically, okay, I saw basically some beginners, right? Okay, uh, some of your friends had this kind of issues there when you paint the shadows, there, right? For me to solve the problem, because I saw the technique that I introduced for the beginning, but effectively can use also for professional works, right? Okay, because I saw a lot of struggles for so many semesters, cycles of semesters. The student had this kind of issues there, okay, with this simply pain sometimes. They don't basically focusing much. I know basically I chose portrait instead of still life because why? Because it's really challenged basically your understanding back again. Okay, I can actually just simply draw a still life first, but you actually can do as well on your own if you want to, right? But when you study directly from your uh, difficulties, that hopefully they will increase more further, motivate a little bit more further, right? Okay? How actually you're going to solve them? Because all these basics, techniques of paintings using a complexity of the subject matters, they're right, generally will benefit a lot. Why? Because we give challenge, we give hardness, the test basically back again, your kind of uh, motivation back again that it works. All right? So that's why I chose basically photos, references, uh, what we call that faces, okay, uh, for the second week of time to work on it. All right, but if you think some of those uh, techniques need to be more refining, just let me know, there, okay? But of course, okay, self-learning also can be helped, there, okay? You can actually find also a lot of a lot of tutorials also can be helped you full. You want to mix them up together. Okay, guys, take a look over here. To define basically the form and structures there, all right? Uh, this area is okay. I'm not using multiple brushes yet but I'm using my pressure point based on the same flow percentage to define this area there, see? Dimension, like illusion of those dimensions there, right? A, a three dimension, that kind of looks, right? That kind of thing also based from our first week exercise, that sphere that we actually paint, right? Basically. So all this kind of thing will give more values on your presentations later on. Okay, I will define after this okay uh how basically i manage okay to uh use one of those techniques okay that we're going to define a uh, highlight okay once we get the highlight you guys can actually can see the connection between uh the paintings okay roughly there okay you can see the results there but of course okay if you look back again on the definition of those uh, shadows there, highlight, uh, this is basically the base shadows, the hard shadows, all right? Uh, the, what we call that base colors there, okay? Can be defined. And this part there, okay? If you look back again, this area is a bit more like uh, close with the hard, uh, not sh hard shadow, but base shadows there to define that, okay? Let me paint that first. This area has a highlight, but I actually can define a bit more areas like this. Okay. Uh, so slowly paint them up. Okay, to give a bit more further kind of tone and form of it there, right? But of course, if you close basically the drawings, uh, this is basically the shadows. All right. It's nothing much. Okay, some of the paint style that you saw, they really paint really details, okay, on the paint style, okay, to define the shapes. Right? But now I just want to give 
bit more loose kind of way, but at the same time, very effective. Work with the line works, but the shading will performing to what we call it to complete basically the whole presentation efforts. All right, that's basically the, the main objective here. All right, okay, now that's the shades and highlight. Let me check basically my recording. It's so far so good. Okay, the highlight there. Okay, select the colors. I'm using white colors, highlights. Okay, now if you look closely, these areas, the eyes, they're right. They also have some sort of light shadings that they performed it from here. So what you can do right now, right now before I add uh, another brushes. All right. So I'm going to slowly paint see, this part. If it doesn't strong enough, you increase a little bit. Okay, for the highlight there. See? There. Slowly, close there, right? Zoom in a bit. You see that, right? I'm slowly painting up right here. Same goes to these areas there. You actually can paint it up there, right? Just to define basically the details. Okay. If you look closely there, okay, the techniques that I actually introduced to you guys is very simple, right? Simple enough. No more. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But I thought basically, okay, some of those tactics that I saw from those internet is really difficult there, right? Okay? Looks like very, uh, what we call that, fancy there, okay? But for, for beginners, it's quite hard there, okay? This one, okay, I just saw a bit more further, right? Okay? Because normally when you draw eyes, you want to draw all those kind of details there. I'm starting with the, I'm starting basically with uh, the shadings using pencil brushes, right? To solve basically the formation of those details. And then we just add in a bit on the tone. And I add in also a little bit on highlight at the same time. That's all. See? All right. Ah. Guys, use your eyes to observe there. Okay? Slowly there to work, right? Okay? And try to uh, capture basically that kind of technique and apply them back again. All right? Make sure you can control there, right? Okay? Same goes with, okay, we go into the more huge space. Okay, huge space. Okay, which one basically where the focus? Nose lah. Okay, first, right. Normally the nose. There's a two different kind of layers of uh, highlight that you can see. The first layer is not the hot spot lah, right? Okay. You just define the highlight at first. So what I can do from here, okay, we make the distance a bit. So I'm going to paint like this. Slowly there, right? Huh? Check the formations that back again. There. Same goes to this part a bit. Okay, these areas over here, if you look closely, there's a highlight a bit there. There's a highlight a bit, a small areas over here. Okay, so train your eyes to see all this kind of detail while you pay. That's why I really, really stress out there, okay, to students, find the right photos there. When you choose the photos, Look at your reference of the photos there first and try to imagine whether and try to figure it out first using your mind there, right? Okay, hey, am I can actually apply this kind of drawing or not? Okay, can I actually paint or not from here? So, if you can, if you think that you actually can solve a few number kind of problems during your kind of thinking process, then you start to work on it. Some highlight over here, I'm uh, reduce it a bit on the on the brushes and start to paint the highlight a bit there, right? See? There. Press a little bit and move. Press a little bit and move there, okay, from here. This one also the same thing. Okay, this area is a bit more big. I'm rubbing a little bit and press. Okay, this one. When I draw some highlight using the, sh the shapes of those uh, flows, okay, from the structure itself. Okay, we cannot paint like this. You're using the formations of it. Okay, just like we draw, uh, draw basically the sphere. Okay, do only things 
the complexity of these areas a bit a bit difference a bit there right so slowly when i paint the record the highlight increase the size a bit right here the whole kind of formations or the whole presentation are going to be defined slowly from right? the details there without we we push too much we, we stress too much there right she works on that okay this part check a look over here this is the reflection slide okay reflection slide there see the small areas there okay so this part there right what you can do okay i paint like this first by right if you use basically the uh, hard ground pressure brushes you can see the hardness but blending at the same time okay uh, see this this is some of the thing that sometimes people don't actually re, uh, recognize or realize that okay, you works on that okay so this part a bit uh, the lips itself okay even though there's a few number kind of tone but i will paint like this first right get okay, the highlight here and same goes to this part here a bit more strong kind of highlight okay but check back again the textures that define basically the light from here the lips there right so if i paint i did it cannot paint basically on the uh, what we call that u shapes so i will paint like this one right okay see i make basically uh up and down kind of formations but try to leave a gap a little bit okay uh, that's one thing that works there okay another things okay these areas uh, i will start to paint like this for the reflection slide but not too much first okay this one it's just the size yeah and same goes to these areas there right so these areas adjust a bit uh, this one basically some reflection light the same goes to these areas over here and these areas there i will try to draw basically overall kind of looks deficits okay there where be, when basically we think we can stop the right, okay? first of all when you paint don't just simply straight away paint look back again uh, what are which areas that you're going to define them if you look back again right here okay i want to see sorry from the screen you can see right okay, the formation the whole things are going to be looked refined once basically you get it through with it right okay that's basically for the skin tone okay next thing is the teeth okay simply there okay simple the teeth okay don't paint everything overall in white colors there this is not basically the Colgate or Ducky or Dali kind of what we call the advertisements. Okay. Ah, I remember that. Okay. So you just paint a bit like okay, right here. You can actually can look into those details if you want to. But for me, I just want to make some suggestions. Shadings here, right here, there, okay. Some suggestion shadings there, right? Uh, to define them. See? Uh, just define, okay, the highlight. And the shadows were going to be naturally be formed okay from your what we call that maybe you can actually get a bit more details there here okay but not too much there guys see slowly the whole things okay going to be stand out there okay naturally when you paint that's basically way that we define the form of it okay now we're going to mix it up between soft brushes hard round pressure brushes okay but using the shading surface okay the shadings there at the highlight see and the shadings so i'm going to define back again okay some of the areas there for the hard shadows see but this one is 30 uh 13 percent i reduce back again to five percent see the way that i actually had the hard shadings there some of the areas that we that we can paint even though the eyes also we can paint even though this uh, eye lip there okay areas that we can paint there okay according to these uh hard shadows there 
Okay, when you come to paint there again, normally you have to uh, differentiate between paint or real estate kind of photos there, right? Okay. Now, so we want to have that kind of a sense of uh, what we call that an illustrations kind of looks and feel at the same times when you paint them up. Okay. But slowly, basically, okay, define them. Don't actually rush too much when you paint. Okay, this area is a bit more hardness. and goes to this one. Okay, even though this one, okay, a bit. Just to define the form of it. All right. Okay, this area is supposed to be a bit more darker. So I try to define that a bit from there. Just one, make mistakes. Control Z. There. So I want to paint over here like a bit more darker there, right? And add a bit kind of shadows at the same times. Okay, this part there, right? This area is there. Uh, that's how we see like define a bit more further on those details. See? Okay, these areas should be a little bit more okay on those uh hardness or those shadows which is basically defined back again those uh the looks okay of the ages okay this one the lip itself can be defined a bit more same goes to these areas over here I draw, I paint basically the lips in different kind of what we call that strokes. Okay. Uh, the, what we call that the gum itself, I paint a bit, simply paint a bit more from there from there. Just to emphasize on the stroke at, at the same times. Okay. This area is there. Okay, the shadows there, right? Okay, this part over here. Same goes this areas a bit. There. So if you look closely, all those kind of detail that you want to see from your illustrations that has been defined slowly okay from this method there, right okay if you're really satisfied with it then you actually can okay another one okay i i forgot that okay this part okay the neck areas Slowly paint and define them back. All right. So once I complete the right, okay, what I can do, okay, the generally basically the cloth there, okay, I just paint a bit more simply like this first. Okay. A bit more sketchy there, right? And then the shadows that form okay, using the hard uh, shadows there, okay, using this. Uh, These hot round pressure brushes. I just defined a bit more suggestions line only there, okay? No need too much details from here. All right. So now basically the hair. Okay, how we define them? First of all, the base colors, okay? Base colors, okay? It's not the base colors there, right? So what we can do from here, how to define them? So how many layers? One, two, three, four, five. So I will separate the hair shapes between the hair shape also those uh, basically the faces. So what I can do next over here, can you see the areas of shadows? 
ADHD. I want you guys to have a look there first, okay, on those, what I see basically on my eyes there. Normally, this is the areas of shad uh, shadows, lah. okay, this part. Uh, this is the, the hard shadows there, right, okay, that define the hair, strokes, and shapes. Uh, you must be able to differentiate them, okay? Uh, so, that's why this part basically normally when people actually using a vector based styles they will try to differentiate the shadows there if you have working with ai before uh, adopt illustrators uh, portrait kind of uh, painting have you done it before All right you differentiate basically the shadows right uh, to define the colors and the structures there same things the concept is the same but they will give a bit more pain natural kind of looks on a bit lah. okay rather than uh, working like a vector base only there, okay, she works on it. So what I can do from here, okay, if I want to paint them up, using basically, uh, because generally, okay, when I actually draw, I already start to differentiate basically the areas there. So what I can do, I will draw the base color, there, paint the base color there first. Because there's a, a few number kind of gradients or blending or shadings or volumes that we see from here, what I can do, a lot of way basically, guys, okay? Uh, one way around, okay, I make selections basically to the shapes over here. Okay, the layers, shapes, okay, overall shapes there, okay? I can paint right here like this, okay? I can paint like this. But the problem is what happens here? What happens? Because these areas, okay, the what we call that when basically I paint on the shades over here, these areas basically is transparent. Okay, transparent. That's why when you paint like this one, right? You saw basically I paint uh, the, the areas of those faces there. So to solve this one simple, okay, I already create the shapes. I already created the shape just now. All right. So this shape is going to be covered some of the areas from there. So what I can do, I just paint that first, like this, simple shades. So how actually I'm going to define them? A lot of way. Some of the some of some of the way we paint like this. Okay, we paint like this. Just to define basically the shadows areas there. Uh, Okay. All right, but don't paint everything too dark because some of the areas has a reflection light, especially at the these areas there. Okay, has a reflection light there. That's why they look so blurry there, right? So, next thing is to define them. What of the way I'm using lasso back again? How? See, check look at all these kind of details. You actually can refer back again to the references like this. So how to define them, see? Using the lasso tools, I will draw the shapes. Uh, this is also one of the speed up techniques and that I use a lot when I actually uh, using this portrait painting there, okay? But remember, okay, we create some illusions. We not just want to define uh, details of these uh, photos. Okay, or the hairlines. Okay, now I'm using alternate to it decrease some of the areas there, the negative space. See? Uh, this one decrease a little bit there, right? And some of the areas like this, I will basically using shift to define the areas of shadows that define from those formation of this curly kind of shapes from the hair. Okay, instead of just painting conventionally, I'm using lasso tools to solve the problem of the complexity of this. Uh, what we call that hair kind of problems there, okay? Not problems there, okay? Then I copy the shapes of it back again. This one, all right? Copy and paste. So what's next that we can do? You cannot see there, okay? Uh, this is basically the shadows that I, that I actually select just now. Okay? 
what I can do from here? A check look there, okay? I'm using multiply, you see? To define the shadows there. Multiply that first. From here, what I can do, this is all one of the techniques uh, to speed up basically our uh, way of working there, right? So what I can do from here, multiply. Then I'm going to use uh, light colors. Okay, to define basically those, sorry. Some of the uh, highlight of it. Okay. Highlight a bit, see? Just like a blurry kind of effect there, right? Wait up. Okay, save the file first. And I'm going back into these pencil hot brushes to draw them, see? Some of those details there. Of course, okay, the best way you, you draw those lines using basically the using basically the drawing slide strokes huh? okay that's the thing that's one way that you works there guys the other thing you have good you can paint them out there right see draw some suggestions there a lot of people always want to draw every single kind of line stroke there right so what I can do from me, if you seems want to choose this curly kind of shapes. Lah. For me, for the beginners, I'm not actually recommending you guys to work on that because it's too complex for you guys to work. So that's why choose the best kind of what we call that, kind of what we call that references that can easily for you to study there first, for the first time, okay? And later on, when you want to study all this kind of detail, you guys can actually work on, on it later on, okay? That's one of the ways it works. All right. And of course, to add more details, using the black colors, and then you draw some of those uh, line or hairline that they can define from here. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right. What is this? Oh. We saw about the line of the selections just now. Okay, so to complete basically these drawings there, okay, for me one thing that we can do there, okay, just add some background colors, okay, just add some backgrounds, brushes, okay, try basically this hot round pressure brushes, it's too much. It works on it. So for the starting kind of what we call that drawings exercise, okay, I would suggest basically you guys work with the uh, grayscale deficit. And the second lessons later on, we're going to play with the with the colors there, right? Okay. Using basically this hot round pressure brushes, of course, you actually can play also with your blurry kind of effects, okay, from the paint style that okay, can be here, see? But adjust the size at the same time that you work on it.
basically a sim checking is okay you want to play with some natures or you paint basically uh what we call that a tree is there, okay you can actually use the same techniques that get you works I try to make those hair kind of formation look more natural like this instead of just look like a, we paste basically those hair okay on those bases there right all right So that's basically those the demonstrations okay for today which is basically hopefully can help you guys a bit more understanding there okay how actually going to define basically those uh, detail for those uh faces kind of what we call the portraits okay kind of painting there you can actually a bit more details okay add a bit more tone a bit on those uh eyebrows at the same times even though basically the eyes okay but try to make sure that you guys can actually differentiate a bit okay between the the pupil and also the iris at the same times okay for example right here i love basically to add a little bit more that what we call that highlights over here okay to make some glowy, uh, glowing kind of effects there, right? Okay, any questions? No? All clear there, right? hand or oh, the eyes okay the hands movements okay practice the best way the flows okay will solve a lot of problems there okay basically to blend but of course the structures that you paint also really define there okay for example so we here okay normally okay when i paint there guys okay the directions there right Okay, when I paint these areas, move. Okay, this side. Okay, this side, they're right. Moving the strokes. Okay, this one, they're right. Okay, I rolling. And of course, I draw, I paint back uh, up and down there. Right, okay, this one, I okay, get the movements. Okay, using basically the formations. Okay, back and forth. Okay, of motions. Same goes to this side. Okay, then you paint them up. All right, this part there, okay, when I paint, I'm using the scribbling kind of motions there. Okay, we call continuous line there, right? Line drawing there. Or contour line drawings. okay to define basically those formation of the strokes all right so the best way practice and practice that you work okay this is basically the arrows that define basically the strokes that i paint okay from there okay don't worry okay i'm using different layers that you work okay some of the areas that you saw from here to paint okay this one easily erase can be erased see uh, just to refine them okay
All right. May I still leave it? Okay, no problem. And some of the things that I always, always also use, okay, to work normally. Okay, I love basically to use also some of those. Brush. Highlight. Hmm. Oh. Sometimes, okay, I'm using basically this backlight kind of. Strokes there, okay. They emphasize more on the characters there. This is based on the presentations only there, right? And you so so I love basically the use of this glowing effects there, okay, to give more a sense of focus on the characters there. I learned this one traditionally that based on one of the markering marker rendering techniques. You okay, get to give a bit more glowing effect on those presentations there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dara Gay, okay, for today's kind of demonstrations. This is came from. Okay, week two. Week two. Exercise. Okay. Session number two. Today is 26, right? Yeah. It's not your class rep, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's try you. Eh? Oh. 